Hi Yogi, welcome to this class. Today's practice is an arm balance focus flow. We'll work up to our peak posture, which is our crow pose. We'll develop some strength, stability, and build some confidence to work up to crow. I'll get started with you today in our tabletop position. Beginning in tabletop, we'll start to warm up the wrists. And it's important to note that the wrists are a pivotal joint, not only in yoga practice, but especially with our arm balances. We rely on them quite heavily. So let's make sure we warm them up nicely. So we'll start by just doing a little gentle back and forth rock. And then we'll start to find a bit of stillness and then dial the fingers out towards the sides. And then we'll just find a little side to side sway, moving really from the shoulders. Try and keep the hips nice and centered and the core actively lifted. Lovely, and we'll dial those fingers back. And then we'll just go ahead and flip the right hand to begin with. Now this might feel quite intense for you. So maybe put a little bend in the elbows and you can just find stillness if you know this is enough for your body. Or again, maybe that little back and forth rock. And we're just hinging as far back as our wrist flexibility allows. Lovely, and we'll dial that right hand back and then we'll just flip the left hand and then do the same thing, either finding stillness or that little back and forth sway. Mm, flip that left palm over and let's just explore a couple of circles here. So as we exhale, go ahead and bring your bum towards the heels and then we'll just shimmy those hips over towards the right, coming towards the right wrist, towards the left and then all the way back around. So we're getting that nice benefit from putting a little bit of pressure on the wrists, moving forwards and back, but also warming into the hips, the sides of the body, the spine, maybe even starting to roll the neck around, getting things moving fluidly. Really beginning to ignite your breath, okay, listening to those ocean waves. And once you get to the top, go ahead and shimmy those hips, Big, open, sassy circles around in the other direction. Moving with the breath again. Lovely. Finding stillness through centre. Take a breath in. So from our tabletop, keeping your hands underneath shoulder points, I'd like you to just scoot your knees back an inch or two. And we're going to find a bit of a chaturanga push-up. Now, chaturanga is essential um, for our arm balance. It's essential that we understand the fundamentals of it, what our alignment's supposed to be like. And really from there, then our arm balancing practice can begin to advance. So as you come into Chaturanga, I want you to lower down on the knees about half the way and then push back up. So really important, we wanna try and shift our shoulders over our wrist, keep our core lifted, keep our elbows moving back, and then get to the point where your elbow matches in line with shoulder points. So we're already going to go down about halfway or just as low as you can and as you lower try your best to stay in one straight line with the body. So we'll take a breath in here. As we exhale, a little shift forward, shoulders over wrist, bend the elbows just going down about half the way, big push to come back up, inhale and then exhale go ahead and take a seat, come into child's. Inhale back as you were into tabletop, knees still back a couple of inches, exhale lower down about halfway. Big push, come back up, inhale, through to the exhale. Again, inhale, move forwards, exhale, lower down. Big push, come back up, inhale, and exhale. We'll go for two more, so breathe in, exhale, press, inhale, and child's pose, exhale. Coming back onto all fours, so back into our little tabletop position. I just want you to curl the toes, and now we're going to come to float and tabletop. So keeping the same nice alignment that we're not dropping from the belly and we're not overly rounding. So a little bit of a spread of the shoulders, but not too exaggerated. So as you curl your toes, I want you to hover your knees just an inch or two off the mat. Right away, you'll feel your arms fire up, your core fire up. Breathe in here. Okay, now bring your right knee towards your right shoulder or your right tricep, tap as you inhale. And then as you exhale, come to lift your hips. Left knee can still be bent a little. Just roll that right hip open and flex the right foot towards the left, like you would in scorpion tail and down dog. Okay, 
Okay. Inhale, bend your left knee, let you come back into floating tabletop. And then tap right knee towards right shoulder. Again, exhale, lift the hips up and back. Roll the right hip open, flex the right foot towards the left. Inhale, come forwards, tap. And exhale, open up. And we'll go for one more, so breath in. Little tap. And then exhale. Open up. Lovely. Shoot your right leg high to the sky. Take a big breath in. And then as you exhale, we're going to step right foot wide of the right hand. Just drop the back knee. Now you can either stay in our lizard pose high up on the tips of the fingers, especially if you feel a little bit stiff in the hips. Maybe a morning class for you. Or if you want to maybe come down to blocks if you've got them, or down onto the forearms. And in this lizard pose, I want you to focus on finding activation and you're finding that point where strength meets flexibility so i want you to actively hug your right knee in towards your right shoulder and then lift through the core so lift from the lower belly make sure you're pressing down through the right big toe and all the weight doesn't just splay onto the knife edge of the foot and we'll take about three more breaths here feel the body release and Exhale. Lovely. Slowly press down into the hands to lift yourself up. Just take a breath in here and go ahead and stretch and reach your right leg out behind you. Point into the toes and drive your right knee towards the mat. Okay. So from that tabletop, we'll lift up again. So ground down through the hands. Spread the fingers nice and wide. Kill your toes from underneath you and pop your knees just above the mat. Okay. Nice long spine. So draw the tail back, the crown forwards. As you inhale, slowly bring left knee towards the left shoulder or tricep. And then exhale, we push the hips back, look back the way and open our hip. Coming forwards again, inhale, right knee bends, left knee taps. Exhale, open the hip, flex the toes. Inhale, little bend to right knee, come to tap. Exhale, open up. Inhale, come forwards and exhale left leg shoots to the sky point into these toes full breath in just drop the left hip slightly and as we exhale we're going to take that big step so left foot goes wide of left hand and right knee grounds to the mat you can scooch the right knee back especially if you want a little bit more space if you're quite open in the hips so maybe staying onto the hands or if it feels good lowering down onto perhaps blocks if you've got them or all the way onto the forearms and just soften into the asana, soften into the pose. Keeping that inner hug of the left knee, the left inner thigh to the left shoulder. So just focusing on the hips and hips do play quite an important role in our crow pose, our peak posture that we'll be working up towards today. It's important as we come into crown, we need to get the knees behind the triceps or just behind on top of the elbows. So the higher your knees are towards your chest, the more you can kind of compress into a little ball and the more of a surface you have to actually rest your knees on. So it helps by lifting the knees as close to the chest as we can get it. And of course that requires good flexibility in those hip flexors. And we'll take one more breath. Okay, press into the hands, just stretch your left leg nice and long, so big breath in, point the toes, and then lower your left knee towards the mat. Killing into the toes, big press to come into you, downward dog, look to the thighs, take a breath out. And seeing as this is your first down dog, permission to just pedal it out and feel into it. I always like to start my down dogs this way, so never just going straight towards that completely pin straight leg, and straight back we've got to give our body the time it needs and then come up onto the tippy toes gaze forwards let's make our way towards our uttanasana so straight into the fold again legs do not have to be straight and you know what they don't have to be straight this entire class if you're feeling stiff today listen to your body just bend as you inhale we'll roll all the way up straight up towards Taking the arms up overhead, so big stretch, reach the fingers up high. And exhale, gather your hands close to your heart and release. 
your fingers by the sides of your body. We'll come straight into another nice little hip opener, one of my favourite asanas which is our yogi squat. So take the feet out wide, maybe the toes even come off the mat like me, I've got big feet. <laughs> Reach the arms up, so inhale, palms touch overhead, maybe find a little peaceful yogi go. And as you exhale, come and take a seat, we're going to come all the way down into our malasana. And maybe your body just allows you to go down about half the way or perhaps you can sink down and it's one of those poses you kind of need to play around with it so you might actually be able to get a little bit lower down lower down by taking your feet slightly wider maybe turning your toes out a little bit more and we'll just breathe <clears throat> for about three breaths so if you can get your elbows inside your knees then encourage them to open encourage the spine to lengthen Lovely. From here, go ahead and reinterlace the fingers. Come back into that peaceful yogi going. Press down through the feet. And as you take an inhale, come to push yourself all the way back up. Just squeeze the bum at the top as you look up high. So inhale, exhale, we're coming all the way back down into the yogi squat. This time, try and keep the knees, the hips spread with the strength of the legs alone without using your elbows. Big press, come back up. Inhale, activate the legs as you squeeze the glutes. Exhale, come and take a seat. Inhale, big press, come up. Exhale, and we'll come up for one more. So breathe in, push up, and breathe out. Come down. Hands lower down towards the heart. Ground down through the hands, lift up through the hips. We're gonna take a little step back to a plank pose. And then we're going to come into Chaturanga. Remind that you can drop your knees down in Chaturanga if needed. So exhale, little shift forwards, elbows bend. Remember, elbows in line with shoulders. Untuck your toes, so lift a cobra pose or up dog. Breathe in. And then pull yourself back into downward dog. Breathe out. Send your right leg up high as you point your toes. Take a breath into three-legged dog. And then as you exhale, bring your right knee towards your right shoulder. And then just pause here as you hug it in. Drop the right foot towards the mat, just outside of the right hand. Keep the back knee lifted if you can. And then either coming onto the tips of the fingers or again, you can use blocks if the ground feels far away. I want you to inhale to scoop and lift your chest, lift your gaze up, and then exhale to pull your hips back. So we're trying to push the hips back into a wide leg pyramid and you can have the soft bend in that right knee still, just as long as you can find the mat with the hands. We lunge it back into the right knee. So inhale, scoop the tail, lift the gaze up, and then open the heart. Okay, nice and light and buoyant and springy on the back left toes. We're gonna take a nice big step. So left foot goes wide of the left hand. Go ahead and sit your hips down towards the mat. Coming back into the yogi squat. Hands come through to heart. Take a full breath in. Peaceful yogi go and take it overhead. And then come all the way back up again. So squeeze the bum at the top and then exhale to sit down. We'll just take one here. So hands reach to the mat, hips lift up halfway. You wanna stick your bum out in the air. Knees stay bent, nice and buoyant. Right foot grounds and left toes go back. So as we lunge into the right knee, keep the hips lifted. And just like we did in that lizard stance, with this time, I want you to draw right knee in towards the shoulder, towards the tricep, and it's that inward squeeze, okay? So left inner thigh also hugs towards the right. And then as you create all that energy, all that activation, maybe that's enough to pluck your right foot off the mat. Don't worry if it's not. And then we'll go ahead and shoot our right leg up high. So three-legged dog. Take a full breath in here. And a full breath out. Shifting forward into plank pose, option to drop the right foot if needed. So inhale brings you forward. We're gonna come all the way onto the belly, onto the mat as we exhale. As you spread the fingers, magnetize through the shoulders as you pull them back. Inhale, lift up the cobra, thighs are down. And exhale, come all the way back towards the earth. Kill the toes from underneath you. We can push up into a full plank if you're feeling strong, or maybe a little tabletop and then step into plank on the inhale. So big press, push up, inhale, and then come back, downward dog, exhale. From downward dog, send the right leg up high again on the breath here. 
and then drive your right knee close to your face, hug into a tight little ball, heel to the bum cheek, pause, and take a big step so the right foot lands in between the hands. Left heel to the mat, okay? Just line your right heel up with your left inner arch, and as you lunge forward into the right knee, bring the arms wide around the sides of the body, palms connect overhead, warrior one. Breathe in for a few breaths. Pulling your outer right hip back, shooting your left hip forward, lunging into the right knee. Draw your lower belly in and begin to knit your ribs to prevent that back bend from creeping in. Take an inhale. As you exhale, press down for your right foot, straighten your right leg and bring your elbows in towards the sides of the waist. So chin tilts back. Lunge back into the right knee as you inhale. And then exhale, start to superman the arms forwards. So your belly is hovered off the thighs, fingers reach actively out in front of you. Open up when you're ready, while you two, breath in. You may want to heel toe that left foot back a little, give yourself some space in the warrior. Flip the right palm to the sky, reach up and over. Exhale, reverse warrior. And breath in, come back to warrior two. As you look over right middle finger, lunge into right knee, little higher one, and we're gonna come into our Adha Chandrasana, so half moon, balance and posture. Wiggle your left foot in if needed. Reach forward with the right fingers. We're gonna drop right thumb just outside of right pinky. If the ground feels far away, again, use a block if you've got one. Just bring your left hand to your hip, pop onto your left big toe, and then slowly does it, lift the left foot away from the earth. And those left toes should be turned out to the left side of the room. Try your best to get your chest open and your shoulders in line. And if you're feeling steady, maybe the left arm begins to lift. Permission to take a sugar cane if this is in your practice, bending that back knee and grabbing for the back toes, kicking foot into hand. Otherwise, just find the stability in the pose. Lovely, one more breath in. One more breath out. Bring your left hand back onto your left hip. Now bend into your left knee like you want to bring your heel to your bum. Bend into your right knee and slowly begin to pivot left knee towards the ear. As you sink the hips back, we're going to come to peel our way off. So all the way up, inhale, right arm reaches high. As you exhale, right hand comes to the outside of the left knee. Take a big breath in, finding lots of height. Flexing through left toes, exhale to find your twist. Make sure your hips point forwards, but your chest rotates back. Option to grab the outside of the left foot and kick the left foot into the hand. Two more breaths. Lovely inhale, pivot the gaze forwards, reach the arms up high, and as you exhale, bend both knees, stick your bum out, and then sweep your fingers back. Inhale, reach the arms up, Ukatasana, palms meet overhead. Exhale, stick it back, float the fingers. Inhale, one more, exhale. As you inhale, come and reach your arms up and then pop the toes up off of the mat. Okay, exhale, we're gonna come all the way down so the bone gets as close to the heels as it possibly can. And then once it comes all the way down, we're gonna then come to, you might need to shovel back a little bit actually. You might need to open the knees up. So it's a bit of a froggy stance, not a traditional yoga, quad, uh, yoga pose, so to say. So we're really gonna just press down through the tips of the toes. Heels can be lifted, they do not need to be rooted. Sink your hips back and then reach fingers forward. So palms maybe foot into the mat. Head can drop down, just taking three breaths here. Take it all in. Okay, inhale to walk your hands back. See when your hands to be underneath your shoulder point. Root down through the hands, lift through the chest as you take a breath in. Now exhale, press the ground away, come to fold. Again, knees can be softly bent. Inhale to open the hips, look ahead. Exhale, root the heels down and fold. Inhale, sit low. Exhale. Inhale, open the knees. Exhale, root. And then one more to come down, so breath in. Again, hands flat to the mat, fingers point forwards. And we want to come into our peak posture now, so our crow pose. We're gonna have a little play around with it. I'll give you some of my best tips, top tips. So you wanna lift, first of all, lift your hips, 
So your hips are higher than your knees, really important. And then another really important tip is to look forwards. Okay, if you look down, you're gonna go down. So keep the neck long and look forwards. If you're scared, you can always use a pillow. You're really gonna plunk yourself onto that. And then take the knees wide. So just like that froggy stance. I like to bring my knees to the back so my triceps as high up as I can. Some people prefer to come outside. And all I want you to do as you spread the fingers, look forwards, hips lift high, knees to the back of the triceps. Think of chaturanga. So we're shifting our bodies forwards. Okay, and then we're getting lighter on the toes, but more grounded through the hands. So maybe we just stay here, still, still with the feet down. Maybe you want to have a little go at just playing with bringing one foot up. Drop it down. Maybe the other foot. Mm, drop it down. One more foot. And drop it down. And you're back. Okay, drop it down. Maybe take a little breather if you want. Inhale. Uh, you can try that again, or perhaps come into the full thing. So remember, hips higher than shoulders, knees to the backs of the triceps, elbows bend and hug into the centre. And we're shifting the weight into the hands. Maybe one foot lifts, and then the other. Gazing on the same spot, breathing, finding that inner strength. Make sure you drop it down. Exhale, drop the hands, fold forwards. Half we lift, breath in. Bend the knees, hands to the mat, we'll step back, plank pose, through to our chaturanga, exhale. Inhale, up dog, cobra pose. And exhale to downward facing dog. This time, as you look forwards, we're gonna lift up through tippy toes, bend the knees. Option to step or jump with the feet wide of the hands, so straight into that yogi squat. Get the bum low, bring the hands to the heart. So inhale, spread the hips as you look forward. And exhale. Interlace your fingers, reach your fingers up high to the sky, so that peaceful yogi going up overhead. So big breath in, press through the feet, lift, squeeze the bum, look up high. Exhale, come down, arms stay up. Inhale, press, come up with the energy. Exhale, come back down. Two more, breathe in, big press. Exhale. And last one, inhale. And exhale. Hands lower down towards the mat, hips lift up about half the way. We're gonna step straight into plank pose again. So one foot at a time, exhale, chaturanga. Breathe in, up dog, cobra pose, exhale to down facing dog. As you inhale, send your left leg up to the sky, point the toes, drop the left hip, and then exhale, bring your left knee towards your left shoulder or your left tricep outside, hold, big step. Left foot steps wide, right knee stays lifted. If you need to drop it, you can go for that. Inhale, scoop the tail, lift the gaze, finding that nice curvature of the spine as you Pull your shoulders back, shine your collarbones forwards. Exhale, pull your hips back. Wide leg pyramid, left knee can be slightly bent, hands can come onto box. Wonderful, lunging back into the left knee as you inhale. Left foot gets rooted, right toes get buoyant and springy. Big step into that yogi squat, right foot wide. Sink the hips down now. Inhale. Piece of a yogi going, just coming up one super so big press. And exhale, come down. Hands to the mat. Inhale, stick the bum, lift it up about half the way, still looking forward. This time, left foot stays firmly rooted, and the right toes go back. Keeping the right knee lifted. Breathe in deeply. Left knee hugs into the left shoulder, and again, it's that inner squeeze, the lift of the mula banda, the pelvic floor. Maybe it's enough to pluck left foot off the mat. Hold and shoot left leg up to the sky, three-legged dog. Inhale. Exhale. Shifting forwards as you inhale, come into that one-legged plank. So you can drop it too much and then exhale, come onto the belly. Inhale, separate the feet so the hips, this is lift the chest, cobra. Exhale, release. Gaze is down, toes curl under, pressing into either tabletop with the knees down or full plank, big push. Lovely, and then downward dog, breathe out. Left leg goes high again, so big breath in, point the toes. Left knee drives towards the nose. As you exhale, big step through the hands. Back heel to the mat, 
left heel in line with right inner arch, arms wide around the sides of the body, palms touch your head, look to your thumbs, left hip pulls back, right hip pulls forward, lower belly draws in, remove that curvature of the spine. One more breath in. And as you exhale, left leg straightens, elbows pinch the sides of the waist, gaze tilts back, try and catch the rain in the mouth. Inhale, lunge into that left knee. Back into warrior one, exhale to superman the arms forward, rooted through the front foot. Inhale, opens you up, warrior two, permission to take the back foot wider, maybe turn the toes out some more. And then flip the left palm, reach to the front and reverse as you exhale. Coming back into warrior two on your breath in. Exhale here. Heel to your right foot in, close off the distance between your feet. Coming into Adha Chandrasana, so reach forward through the left fingers and then maybe left thumb lines. I like to line it up with my left pinky toe. Right hand to the right hip. All the weight now is going into the left foot. Keep the side of the body open, lighter and lighter until maybe right foot can lift. And if we're feeling balanced, maybe the right arm lifts. Try and get the arms nice and level. Find your Ujjayi. Option to find a sugar cane if you took it on the other side. Bending through the back knee, grabbing for the back toes and kicking foot into the hands. Two more breaths. Super strong, super balanced. Nice. Right hand towards the hip. If you bent the knee, slowly come back. So heel to the bum, left knee bend, right knee now points down the way. And we're going to peel ourselves up to that standing posture. So carry right knee up to the chest, carry the left arm up, take a breath in as you rise. And then left hand to the outside of the right knee. Exhale, we twist back the way. Looking beyond our right shoulder. Option to straighten out that right leg. So if you want to grab to the foot from the outside and kick foot into the hands, two more breaths. Love the yogis. Inhale, arms up. As you exhale, both feet and knees touch. Sweep and float the arms back. Inhale, come up. And exhale. One more like that. Breathe in. Chair plane on the exhale. As you inhale, arms reach up onto the tips of your toes. And then exhale, come down. We're going to take a seat. Bump towards the heels. And we'll take the knees out wide fingers to the mat. Again, you can shuffle back a little bit if you come in too far forwards. And then just push your hips back and drop your gaze for three breaths. As you inhale, walk your hands back, hands underneath shoulder points, gaze forward, open the chest. Exhale, drop the heels, fold. Inhale, knees wide, bum down. Exhale, push. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, spread. And exhale. One more to come down on the breath in. Okay, hands root forwards. Maybe they come off the mat. I like to get them under my shoulder points. We're going to come straight on into our peak posture, so our crow. Remembering that little checklist of everything we learned. Trying to break it down. Take it slow, actually digest all of the information. And then lift the hips up. So again, bum, higher than shoulders, knees, backs of the triceps or outside. Some people like to squeeze. Spread the fingers. This is your foundation, the hands. And it's a shift, it's not a jump, okay? It's a shift. We're slowly giving ourselves the time we need to take off. So as we look forwards, lighter and lighter, think of chaturanga arms. Maybe both feet start to float, hold in. You can still just play around with one foot and then the other, it does not have to be both feet. Make sure your gaze, exhale, come on down. Inhale, and exhale, come to fold, Uttanasana. Halfway on your breath in, bend your knees, step it back, plank pose through to Chaturanga. Inhale and exhale. As you inhale, big roll to come forward into high plank. And then exhale all the way onto your belly. Just release your toes. Go ahead and just make a bit of a cushion for yourself. So your forehead can just drop onto the hands. And just absorb all of that. Nice. 
reach your arms out in front of you and we're going to come into a nice little shoulder stretch so with the arms long forehead down get your right arm and then loop it underneath your left drop your chin down so you just feel a nice stretch through the right side of the shoulder and then notice if you kind of roll into the right try and encourage the shoulders to square off Okay, from here, take the left knee out wide to the left. So you want to rest on the inner part of the foot, the inner part of the knee. Now we're going to come and find a twist. So this should feel really good. It's one of my favorite transitions. Left hand can come to your left hip. And now you just want to peel your left shoulder open to the side. And we're looking in the direction of that shoulder. So right arm stays long. And if you want a little bit more, left arm will spread fully towards the left. And just allow your left shoulder to start to find the mat. It's okay if left knee lifts, it does not have to be rooted to the mat. Feeling that sensation across the chest, the shoulders, the hips. Lovely, and slowly come out of that. So left arm goes long, right arm goes long. We'll just take that on the other side. Loop it under the left arm with the right, chin towards the tracer. Breathe into the shoulder stretch. And now right knee comes out wide. So remember on the inner part of the knee, on the inner part of the foot, we'll come to peel our way open up, right hand, right hip, right shoulder, pulls to the side, gaze beyond that shoulder. And if you fancy, right arm can fully stretch out so the arm is nice and long. Encourage the right shoulder to grab. Right knee can be lifted. Just try and get your left hip directly underneath the right. you have in your body is final twist. And slowly work your way onto the back. So we're now facing up the way towards the sky. Separate the feet, little gap between your heels and the tips of your fingers. And we're just going to take a bridge. So roll up through the length of the spine, squeeze your inner thighs without them touching, like you're squeezing for a block. Feel a nice stretch on the fronts of the hip flexors. And inhale, really open and expand through the ribcage and then draw them in. Slow exhale, come all the way down towards the mat. Heel to your feet in and separate your knees. Bring in one hand towards your heart and one hand onto your belly. Just feeling that breath in the body. Allowing the body to regenerate. Rejuvenate. Just take as long as you need in this final Supta Bhadakanasana. Thank you so much for joining me in this class.